This is the digital age. This age is described by some business people as the age of infrastructure scaling. As business and organization leaders, our task goes beyond creating public buzz. The digital revolution is bringing about changes in modes of production and patterns of consumptions, in how we understand the world, in how we govern, and even in how we live together in society. The theme for the summit, digital innovation economy for business growth, resonates with this recognition and also us as Deloitte because digital transformation is our number one client engagement theme in the African market. We need to raise the bar when it comes to corporate governance in Ghana so that we can compete and build global world-class companies. In an increasingly globalized and borderless world, Ghanaian businesses must be structured and oriented not to only compete, but dominate the market of their operations. Now every nation starts development by focusing on their most abundant resources. We can actually eliminate the human intervention, and human intervention sometimes bring about corruption and things like that. So we can actually use that to eliminate the intervention and bring efficiency into our system. But we have to be bold and make that radical move to be able to do that. So in creating domestic strength, we need to give protection to our fledgling domestic companies, industries. Because Ghana wants to be globally competitive. So the target should not be comparing yourself with Nigeria, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Togo, Ghana. Ghana can do better. I think it is very important for the government to create the right opportunities for the private sector development. It is said that blockchain is to business what the internet is for communication. We cannot just be consumers of technology, but we must be inventors and contributors of the technology that we use. Process is critical, proficiency, and also uh, prioritizing the things that we really need to do. And of course, let's not forget it's important that we embrace technology. For an economy to grow, simply you have to look at it that you need to have a trade balance. So what you spend should not be more than what you earn. Now we are talking about digital economy. I sit and I look at Ghana and I think that we have done significantly well. Now, that significantly well is on the premise on where we have come from. Where we have come from, from the colonial days to the dark age, to the industrial age, to the agricultural age, to the information communication technology age. Ghana has signed various protocols, and I believe this to be true, that Ghana is one of the few countries that honors those protocols. So what the government needs to do is to get the economic stability, get the CD stable, yeah. get interest rates down, inflation down. I think this counts more than anything. We can start by putting a system of checks and balances, a framework for accountability, so at least we can see the politicians walking the walk, not only talking the talk. It's no longer about how good your ideas are, it's about how shareable they are. So how many people are actually going to make your idea go viral? How do we move from level two which is the emerging level, to level three, which is the transitional level. How much digitization actually will change the way we do things and how much it actually has changed the way we actually do things today. So for me, it's important that we actually understand that if my input costs were near zero, what more would I do? We are quite weak when it comes to the organization of the regulatory framework. Um, as we speak, we've not migrated. Uh, the digital transformation is being implemented and uh, these are all things that we should consider. And I believe it's not just the job of, of all distinguished gentlemen and ladies sitting in the ICT and telco uh, industry. Um, it's the honor lies on the likes of developers, government and other players in the industry to ensure that we are putting our best to, to ensure that you know, where we promote the industry. It's really important that when we talk about removing barriers, when we talk about building human capital, 
things that we need to do are to just put the stuff in people's hands and let them try. Because all the great innovators, inventors and engineers of the world were people who took things apart, put them together today. First of all, not every improvement in an organization is transformational. We, all, we need a mindset change that says that even though you know, culturally there are roles in the workplace, the world has changed and work, work isn't all about muscle and strength any longer. So, you know, women should be included and as business leaders, we need to make a conscious effort to deal with that cultural bias. So there is light at the end of the tunnel, but are we doing enough? I don't believe so. There's a lot of talk about um, inclusion, about um, gender disparity, but we need to go beyond talking the talk. We need to walk the walk. You educate a female child, you educate a nation. So you today are representing the nation and you have proven that it's not about IQ anymore. It is about the EQ. The emotional quotient is very, very important. So fabulous, whatever you're doing. We cannot leave men out of this conversation and we have to go along with the men. So it shouldn't be we against them situation. Many say that Ghana is different, Ghana is changing. We're seeing that top multinationals in Ghana are employing female leaders to grow their businesses in Ghana. We have top female executives heading institutions from telcos, to financial institutions. Is this enough? We have to ensure that whatever programs and you know, policies that have been um, implemented by government, these are placed in the context of sustainability and the values that are espoused by these goals. I think anybody who lives in Ghana could not possibly understate the importance that peaceful transitions of power means for business and for growth. How do we change commitment into action? One is contextualizing this very same set of goals. And as mentioned earlier, a lot of these goals are already the national priorities for many countries anyway. But the point is, how do we make these priorities interlinked, integrated, and that they are all delivering to that aim, which is the prosperity of peoples and nations. These have been with us from day one. The difference is that there have been a series of policy failures and the lack of commitment. Work with your own government. Make sure that the agenda that we have is the agenda that you want and criticize the international community when they don't deliver. It's time we took our destiny into our own hands and perhaps it will be easier if we don't classify them as SDGs. We're less dependent on the US and the UK. I mean, that's our, our, our share of ex exports and imports from them has actually been declining. We need to make ourselves relevant make ourselves relevant and depend more upon ourselves. Government policies come with for implementation, so if the business community doesn't understand the policy, it's very difficult for the business community to take advantage and also to implement the policies. Because government always wanted to engage with the private sector, so if the private sector is not strong, um, we can't move forward as a country. Nothing in life has been achieved by large numbers. From colonial struggle to independence to multi-party democracy to the well-being of our economy, it's all been done by the critical mass. So really it's quite impressive uh, summit, I would call it. So a lot of uh, quality information got shared over here. A lot of, you see, it's a kind of a platform, very unique, very good platform, which is actually required for any developing country. Where am I going to be in five years' time? Am I going to be able to implement my idea? Am I going to, to, am I going to stay there at one place? What am I going to do? What is my country, where is my country going to be? All in all, it's been a very, very good two days. I think it has taught me a lot. Some of the things or the problems that we're having now, if we can inculcate it in our educational system from the scratch, we would have um, graduates coming out, having a basic understanding of business before they step out um, into the real world. As we depart from here, may we think of the things that are noble and of good report, the things that are worthy of praise and of the common history that binds and reminds us of hope in the future as we seek a turn about in our fortunes.